<laughs> Happy Tuesday, everybody. Oh, we got a great show tonight. Nikki Haley is here with us. <laughs> you know, she has a new book. Uh, the title is, If You Want Something Done, Ask a Woman. Ain't that the truth? Especially when it comes to vacuuming my office. Am I right? A sexist would say. That's terrible. Very bad. But in all fairness, a woman did write that joke. Which is proof if you want something done, you got to ask a woman. <laughs> and she wrote it probably while watching one of her stupid soap operas. Wow, yet another sexist would say. I'll stop, Nikki. But that, uh, that just pumped it up Amazon a few. <laughs> All right. So have you seen any good movies lately? And I don't mean the one that went viral of Kill Me in that alpaca. Good llamas and... But if you said no, well, that's your fault. You're probably racist, sexist, or even a homophobe. That's how actor Billy Eichner angrily explains his pathetic box office debut of his gay comedy, Bros. True, I get more viewers when I leave the bathroom door open. Although it made gay cinema history, replacing Brokeback Mountain with Broke at the Box Office, <laughs> it was so sparsely attended, no one got monkeypox. A homophobe would say. Terrible joke. Apparently, it made four million bucks over the weekend. That's what Larry Kudlow left the waitress at the Cheesecake Factory two <laughs> nights ago. <laughs> By comparison, here are other movies that made more than four million. Me and My Toe Fungus, <laughs> The Life and Times of Michael Moore's Lower Intestine, Volume 5. <laughs> it's on Netflix. You should check it out. And finally, The Good, The Bad, and Joy Behar. <laughs> I, think we, I think we have a clip of uh, our favorite scene. <laughs> I'm never going to stop. Eichner's excuse for the movie's poor performance is that straight people didn't want to see his gay movie. And in the real world, that means no people wanted to see his gay movie. And why? Because he craps on so many people every day, he really should be making only German porn. <laughs> and if you get that joke, you're disgusting. <laughs> True, if you don't embrace his narrow political view, you are evil, which makes up about three quarters of the planet's population. This is the guy who's mad you didn't see his movie. If there are any Republican women out there, so many of your husbands are pretending to be straight right now. But my focus is not on Trump voters. There's no way in the next 48 hours I'm going to miraculously get someone who's racist to, you know, be not racist. I am sick of Donald Trump. I am sick of everyone that associates with him. Hmm. I don't see the appeal. <laughs> But frankly, he really is about as offensive as a kitten playing with a ball of yarn. There's no risk there. But there are some lessons here, Billy. One, if you promote a film as identity specific, you're going to exclude as much as you pretend to include. You telegraph to audiences that this is for others, but maybe not you. It's true whether you do a gay flick or a documentary on switchblades. Then after you spend years demeaning instead of growing audiences, you blame everyone but yourself when no one shows up. That's the long-term effects of identity politics on your personality. Nothing is ever your fault. You are a perennial victim. It's actually the only thing that identity politics actually creates. It's not audiences, it's victims. But also, Billy got tricked by Hollywood's o o a phony virtue signaling to actually think that his audience would be larger than it is. So it's no wonder the theaters were emptier than a room where they're trying to surprise Kamala on her birthday. <laughs> So, so he flees to Twitter where he blames lack of ticket sales on homophobia and straight people in certain parts of the country. But that's even more BS because the real no-shows are his people because he already drove away everyone else. It isn't the Trump supporters who let Billy down. It was his supporters, which is a good thing for Billy. As people like Billy on the left always stress, diversity is so important. And your movie was rejected by a very diverse crowd. People of all stripes said, screw that noise. So talk about unity. This country came together to say they'd rather get dental work than see Eichner's movie. 
But that's the problem with art based on identity. Even people who identify with you might even resist it. If Hollywood keeps making movies that alienate the public, then that's on them. And you'd have to be a real lunatic uh, to be surprised by that. Look, I know you're upset that your movie isn't doing very well, but as your agents, I think we need to reassess your brand. This is all white people's fault. How come they didn't go see my movie? Uh, well, you are a white person. Huh. Also, black people didn't see it either. And I don't think it helped things that you called the film White People Really, Really, Really Suck. That's like 70% of the country right there. I didn't make it for them. No, but it didn't help things that right before the premiere, you tweeted, the following people should not see my movie. Whites, Christians, men, women, blue collar workers, gun owners, Republicans, libertarians, rotarians, straight people, weightlifters, meat eaters, and dudes named Kevin. Representation matters. It certainly does. Uh, and that's why we can no longer represent you. Good luck with everything. You're just saying that because you're white, Kevin. So Hollywood lost the plot once they made identity a priority over entertainment. That got Billy the movie gig, but it didn't give the audience much more. Instead, you're left with films that have strong political, social, and cultural messages, but aren't entertaining. It sounds a lot like my definition of propaganda. So Billy, if you want people to come to see your movies, don't call them losers. Why not get to know the greater audience instead of browbeating them? But remember, this is a guy who once said, F Trump, F his whole family, F anyone that chose to work with him, and F every single Trump voter. And guess what? I'm still with her, you misogynist American dummies. So I guess, uh, Billy, you found out the feeling's mutual. Let's welcome tonight's guest. She's so sharp, she gives balloons nightmares. Former ambassador to the UN and author of the new book, If You Want Something Done, Nikki Haley. The biggest laughs he gets are from his dating profile. Actor, writer, and comedian, Jamie Lissau. She's 90 pounds soaking wet, and from all of those spilled margaritas. Fox News contributor, Kat Tim. And he acts like he's above everybody else. Because he is. My massive sidekick in the NWA World Television Champion, Tyrus. Get it, call. All right. <laughs> ambassador, governor. Do I say ambassador, governor, governor, ambassador, or just ambassador? It's Nikki. Those are moments in time. Oh, I like that. Moments of time. That's my next book. By the way, congratulations. I love the color. Thank you. It's a great color. You know, I'm it's proud like of a, you. It's the color of my fridge. <laughs> it's the color of every fridge. <laughs> so I, before I ask a topic, well, this is kind of along the same lines, identity politics. Did Sonny Hostin ever apologize to you? She did not. Neither did her producers or anyone else. Isn't that crazy? I don't know if people forget or remember that she said that your name, Nikki, was made up. And right. that was never on the birth certificate. In fact, it was. It's, it's uh, an Indian name. Yes, right. and Sunny is not on her birth certificate. <laughs> Whoopi is not on her birth certificate. <laughs> but you know what? When they, the ladies at The View, when they start to attack you, that's when you know you're winning. So I'm yeah. okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that... Anybody who ascribes to the world of identity politics always ends up seeing themselves as a victim. So he, he, he looks at the problem instead of trying to figure out what the problem is, it's everybody else's fault. Absolutely. And, you know, then they go and whine and complain about it. You can't alienate so much of the population and then get upset when they don't want to see it. And the reality yeah. is the movie didn't look funny. That's yeah. why people didn't go see it. It didn't look funny. But it's a lesson for actors, musicians, athletes. Stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. Stay in your lane. Otherwise, don't complain when the money doesn't flow. Yeah, you know what, Jamie? You have no lane. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, uh, Speaking of money not flowing. Yes, yes. <laughs> And that leads me to a question. Um, you claim to be heterosexual, although you had a miserable marriage. Um, <laughs> if, you were, if, you were, um, if you were asked to do a gay scene, if you were asked to do a gay scene in a movie, would you do it? Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. If it was funny yeah. and not a piece of crap like this, or if it was uh, something that moved the story forward, I absolutely would. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. I saw the trailer and on every level having nothing to do with if people are gay or not. It, w it was not funny. It didn't seem original. It was kind of hacky. 
But I mean, that was the first weekend. I think they're going to do okay. Like on Rotten Tomatoes, it's getting uh, two tomatoes rubbing against two other tomatoes, <laughs> which is uh, a <laughs> four. <laughs> four tomatoes. Can I, I want to say something that's not a joke, but you know what other movie um, beat this movie in Arizona this what, weekend? What? Uh, my movie called Daddy Daughter Trip that was released in 17 theaters mm -hmm. in Arizona. We actually beat this movie. We were, uh, thank you guys. One of the, uh, we got. One of the viewers of the movie are here. That was it. <laughs> yeah. We well, we, in. we were so low budget though. Like yeah. for real, I think it shows that you could just have like, it's about the content and it's not about you. And, and you don't, you also don't like blame the crowd. By the way, this movie, Daddy Daughter Trip, that I wrote with Rob Schneider, I'm also in it. And um, I have a scene with my hero, John Cleese. And during the premiere, I went to get a popcorn and I missed my scene. Mm. So <laughs> that also tells you how much I'm in the film. Yes. <laughs> well, you were right. That wasn't funny. <laughs> Tyrus. He calls you friend. That's yes. So yes. You're one of my closest friends. You know, um, <laughs> I know you saw this movie because you told me to see this movie. I saw a movie in which the protagonist was an elderly female Asian. Right. I'm not an elderly female Asian, and no. yet I love this movie. It was Every, phenomenal. Everything, everywhere at once. So, and also, the the subplot is lesbians. Yep. The, his, you know, and that's that's. His, it's like, but I don't even think of that. I just think it was of a, a great good movie. Film. That yeah. just. Here's the thing. There's, they first of all when. Here's the problem with the woke. They always act like they're the first to do anything and never do any research. Yeah. It was a really funny movie called In and Out. Yeah. Tour Song Trilogy was really good. In and Out's a great film. It's a great film. Yeah. Okay. Ever heard of The Birdcage? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, those yeah. were phenomenal yeah. movies that had they had the whole subplot was about being gay or whatever. But they were great movies that just happened to have gay people in them. This was like one of the lines from the commercials was, you had a good run, heterosexuals. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> If I was sitting on the couch and it was like, you're on your way out, Negroes, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> that gives me an idea. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't care who was in it. It's like, oh, that's not for me. That, it, that crystallizes this point, is that we can, we can make fun of you and then you don't, uh, you don't like to be around us anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's, but yeah. it's not making fun of. That's the yeah, point. Yeah. Like, yeah. Who we should be mad at is LGBTQ, R, and S, because they, they were didn't. the ones supposed to show up and they yeah. didn't show up. Nobody showed up, Kat. Is that your fault? Well, I don't really like going to the movies, because yeah. whenever I do, the movie gets all the attention. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, and it's hard for you to keep that chair down. It's hard. Well, I guess, okay, but also, like, liberals were upset about it, too, because the gay guys were white gay guys. Mm -hmm. There was people that were, like, upset about that. Uh, also, people just think he's annoying. I think a lot of people, I don't think it's really a political thing it, yes. to find him extremely annoying. He has my problem. Yeah, also, true. <laughs> also, also, it, it's spooky season. Yeah, it is spooky. Nobody wants to watch two people fall in love unless one or both of them are going to meet an untimely violent death in October. Yes, that is so true. They should have introduced some kind of monster. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, that monster, of course, would be Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we've, we've uh, done a good job on this topic. I think Maybe, I did a great job. I think you did okay. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.